In this lecture, we are going to understand what are side effects in React and how we can work with side effects using use effect React hook. When we create a React application, we create it using components. Now, the main job of a React component is to render UI, to react to user inputs and events, and to re-render the UI whenever it's needed. And that's what we were focused on so far. So far, we have learned about states and events and other aspects of React. And so far, the main objective was to render a UI and react to events, and also to re-render UI whenever the state in a component changes. Now, what are side effects? Side effects can be everything that might be happening in your application, which is not related to UI rendering. For example, sending an HTTP request to the server. When we send an HTTP request to the server, we are not rendering anything in the UI. Nor React should re-render the UI like it does when the state changes. Another example of side effect would be when we store something in the browser storage. This also should not re-render the UI. And that's why this task is also a side effect. Also, when we set timers or intervals in our code, this is also an example of side effect. So these are some tasks which we also do when creating a React application. But these tasks are not related to rendering something in the UI, at least not directly. Of course, when we send an HTTP request to the server and when we get the response, we might want to render the response data in the UI. But sending the request itself and handling the potential errors, that is not something related to rendering something in the UI. So these types of tasks must happen outside of the normal component evaluation. So we know that whenever the state inside a component changes, it re-evaluates that component. And with that, all the logic in that component function is re-executed. But we might want to have some tasks inside a component function, which should only be executed whenever something changes. And these types of tasks we call as side effects. And to work with side effects, we have a hook in React called as use effect. So let's understand what is use effect and how we can use it with a simple example. In the next lecture, we will take a look at a more practical example where we will understand how we can use use effect react hook in a real world project. Here, I have created a brand new react project and these are the default HTML which we get when we create a react project using create react app. So from this HTML, from this JSX, I'm going to remove this header section and here I'm going to add three button elements. Let's call this button element home and in the same way, let's also create two more button elements about and contact. And then let's create an H3 element and within these S3 elements, we want to render some text dynamically based on which button we have clicked. So for that, what I'm going to do is inside this app component function, I'm going to use a state. And to use a state, the first thing which we need to do is we need to import use state from React library. Now let's go ahead and let's call this use state function inside this app component. And we know that this use state function is going to return an array. So here, let's use the array destructuring syntax. And inside these square brackets, let's create a variable. Let's call it resource type. And let's also create the state updating function. And let's call it set resource type. And for the initial value to this resource type variable, let's pass home. Okay. And within these H3 elements, we want to use the value of this resource type variable. So if I save the changes, if we go to the web page, here you can see by default home is displayed here. Now on each of these button elements, I'm going to add on click event listener. And to this, I'm going to assign a function. So for that, I'm going to use this arrow function syntax. And inside this function, I'm going to call this set resource type state updating function. And to this, we need to pass the updating value. So when this home button is clicked at that time, we want to assign this resource type with this value home. So I'll copy it from here and I will pass it to this 
set resource type function. Let me copy this statement from here and let's specify it on other button elements as well. And here, when this about button is clicked, we want to set this resource type with this value about. Similarly, when this contact button is clicked, we want to set the resource type with the value contact. So now if I save the changes, if we go to the web page, let's refresh the page. So initially here, home is displayed. When I click on this about, you can see that about is displayed. When I click on this contact, you can see that this contact is displayed. Now here we have a problem. Let's understand that problem. So for that, what I'm going to do is every time this component is rendered, I want to log something in the console. For that, let's use this console.log statement. And here, let's say app component rendered. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's open developer console. Okay, so when I reload the page, initially home is displayed and you can see app component rendered has been displayed here. Let me clear the console here. When I click on this about, again, you can see app component rendered. When I click on this contact, again, you can see app component rendered. Now, if I click on this contact again, again, the component has been rendered. Okay, even though the value here, the value for this resource type is not changing. In that case also, this component is getting re-rendered in the web page. Okay, so you can see that current value is contact. And when I click on this contact button again, the value is not changing, but the component is getting re-rendered. And to avoid this problem, we can use use effect react hook. So let's go back to our VS code and let's also import use effect react hook from the react library. And now let's go ahead and let's call this use effect function. Now this use effect function takes two arguments. The first argument is a callback function. So for that here, let's use this arrow function syntax. And the second argument is a list of dependencies. And we specify the list of dependencies using square brackets. So the second argument is an array. And inside this array, we can specify all the dependencies for this use effect function. Now we will talk about it in a bit. For now, what you need to understand is here, this callback function will be called whenever the dependency which we specify inside this array changes. Okay, so for the dependency, for now, let's specify resource type. Let me specify it inside this array. And inside this callback function, let's say we simply want to log the resource type in the console. So let's copy this resource type variable and let's specify it here. All right, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page now. Let me clear everything here. Let's also refresh the page. So initially, when this app component has been rendered, you can see this app component rendered message has been logged here. And also the value of the resource type has been logged here. Now, when I click on this contact button, again, the component will be re-rendered. So you can see the component has been re-rendered and the new value of the resource type has been logged here. But now if I click on this contact button again, since the value has not changed, this callback function, which we have passed as the first argument to this use effect, this has not been executed. Even though this app component has been re-rendered, so we can say that from this message, but this function here, which we are passing to this use effect, this has not been re-executed. That's because the value of this resource type did not change. This function will only get executed whenever the value of the dependency which we specify inside this array changes. So if I go back to the web page and if I click on this about button, this time the value of the resource type will change. And since the value of this resource type has changed, this callback function has been re-executed and it has logged the resource type, which is about in the console. So this is the use of use effect react hook. When you want to execute a piece of code, Whenever the value of a dependency changes, in that case, you can use this use effect react hook. Now, let's say there are some code in your component function, which you only want to execute during the initial rendering. That means when the web page is 
rendered for the first time. For that, what you can do is you can simply pass an empty array to this use effect as its second argument. So now this callback function will be executed only for the first rendering. Let's see that in action. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me clear everything here. Let's reload the page. So you can see for the first time, the resource type has been logged here. But now when I go ahead and click on this about button, the component has been rendered, but the resource type has not been logged here. In the same way, when I click on this contact button, again, the component has been re-rendered, but the value of the resource type has not been logged here. So here, since we are passing an empty array, this callback function will be executed only during the initial rendering. But if we pass a dependency here, for example, this resource type, in that case, this callback function will be executed for the initial rendering as well as every time the value of this resource type changes. Now here, we are only specifying one dependency, but you can also specify multiple dependencies because this is an array. So you can specify multiple dependencies separated by comma like this. So this is a very high level overview of what side effects are and how we can handle side effects using this use effect react hook. In the next lecture, let's understand the use of this use effect hook with a more practical example.